Welcome to Season 2 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big health topics into small bites. I'm Amy, and this season I'll share all the tips, tricks, and hacks you need to get healthy with an MTHFR mutation in a step-by-step, week-by-week process. I can't wait. This week, I am so excited to answer some MTHFR questions. I love it when listeners leave me questions, so here is this month's roundup. Question 1. I don't have a doctor that advises me about MTHFR. A mental health provider suspected the mutation because of years of resistant depression. She did a swab test to test genetics for specific medication absorption, which included MTHFR testing. We found that I have compound heterozygous mutations. I've been on a high-dose methylfolate and B12 for a few years and wonder if I should be getting regular tests for levels. Where should I go? I've researched this topic myself online, but it's very confusing and there seems to be no general consensus. Can you help me? Thank you, Jamie L. So this is such a great question, Jamie, because so many MTHFR folks out there are doing it by themselves, right? You're doing it on your own. Unfortunately, online and between practitioners, there is absolutely no consensus on the best way to do this. So really, it comes down to finding the right path for you or a practitioner or resource that you really trust and just trusting them. I noticed that you mentioned methylfolate and B12, and that's great. But make sure you're taking the other B vitamins as well because they're all necessary for this to work, especially riboflavin. Also, if you've been taking high doses of methylfolate without other Bs, then cut your dose down, like in half, maybe a quarter before you start them, because the dose might be too high once you get the other pieces of the puzzle in place. In terms of testing, the things we want to look at specifically for MTHFR are folate, B12, and homocysteine. Testing up every couple of years is fine. We don't need to micromanage this. Testing folate is complicated because unmetabolized folic acid is mixed into your total, so the test isn't so valuable as a measure of actual functional folate, except to show us trends, like it's getting higher or it's getting lower. B12 testing is very straightforward, as is homocysteine testing, and if you aren't familiar with homocysteine, check out Season 1, Episode 40, Homocysteine by the Numbers, which gives the normal range, but also the optimal range that you should look for. And if you need a link to that, it's in the complete show notes on the website to healthwiththat.com. Outside of testing, the biggest determinant of whether or not you're on track is actually your symptoms. How are you doing? How are you feeling? If you're not where you want to be, then maybe it's time to work with a practitioner who has some knowledge about MTHFR and can help you on your path. If you have someone locally, that's incredible. If not, there's myself and a number of other practitioners who see people remotely. Okay, question two. Hi, I have an eight-year-old boy. He was diagnosed ADHD at the age of six. We started him on methylphenidates at age seven. We've tried nearly all of them, and none of them agreed with him. We have gene testing done earlier this year, and MTHFR came back as low to intermediate activity. The majority of the ADHD medications came back with low odds of response. What do I do with this information? We have a family history of bipolar and anxiety disorders. The ADHD medications really brought out a lot of anxiety in my child. He's very competitive. He's obsessive. My son has terrible issues with skin rashes that started when he was four. We had skin patch testing done. He's allergic to hydrocortisone, formaldehyde, fragrances. Once we took gluten out of his diet, his rashes were much more under control. Every time I listen to your podcast, I think some of my son's issues point back to his MTHFR. Do I take this to his pediatrician? Do I work with his psychiatrist? Do I see a functional medical doctor? What do we do next? From Mindy J. Yeah, ADHD on top of MTHFR is very common, and it's a difficult situation because the medication that helps so many other kiddos just won't work here. I do certainly think that addressing the MTHFR is the next big step here because this kiddo fits all of the typical patterns for an undermethylator, a pretty severe undermethylator with high histamine, right? A lot of allergic response, a lot of atopia. So I would talk with both his psychiatrist and his pediatrician and see if either of them is comfortable fielding this issue in a way other than prescribing a massive dose of folic acid because that's not going to help him. 
If they aren't familiar enough with MTHFR, then find a practitioner who is. It's always best to work with someone local because they can actually see you face to face, examine his skin, right? Actually be in the trenches. But if you can't find someone that I do still work with people one on one, check the Amy Plus Health Coaching link at the top of the page at tohealthwiththat.com. And good luck. Keep me posted and send any follow up questions or just an update on how your kiddo's doing. Number three. Hi, I'm compound heterozygous, so of course I have the CT and AC copies. I'm hoping to start trying to get pregnant soon. Yay! And I want to know what vitamins I should be taking that will work with the copies that I have. I am on five milligrams of L-methylfolate right now, but no B vitamins. I tried a B complex and it made me very mean and hateful. So I've been scared to try anything else. I want to have the best chance at a healthy pregnancy. Thank you from Briona H. So congratulations, Briona, on the future baby making. That's super exciting. It's such an exciting time for you. And I'm so glad you brought this up because it's actually really common for people to start 5-LMTHF before they start other B vitamins or B12 and then have weird reactions to the other Bs when they start. It is absolutely crucial that you do start other B vitamins. And I think the reason why the B complex made you mean and hateful before was that when you add in the other B vitamins, suddenly your dose of 5-L-methyl tetrahydrofolate was actually way too high. So that was what was causing the mood and attitude changes and not the Bs. The reason I say this is what ha- what's happening in this situation is that your MTHFR enzyme is still really limited because it needs other B vitamins to work. Riboflavin is a direct cofactor. So if riboflavin isn't bonded to that enzyme, the magic just doesn't happen, right? It doesn't go. So your dietary intake of riboflavin is maxing out the amount of 5-LMTHF that you can use. So you do need to add B-complex back in there. But before you do, drop your 5-LMTHF down to one milligram. I know that's a huge drop, but just drop it down to one milligram for a couple of weeks and then add the B-complex. Also, check the B12 in the B complex because some people have a weird reaction to methyl B12 as well. And if you need it, there's a link to a post on all the different forms of B12 in the complete show notes on the website. So when you do give this a try, let me know how it all goes. Keep me posted because I would love to hear. And the last question from somebody ambiguously labeled human. How do my folate levels drop after starting Metanex and a multivitamin with active folate? Well, so that's another great question. And I'm actually guessing a bit because I don't know what your folate levels were before you started. I can say that what I see often in clients is that they come in with super high folate on lab tests, but a functional folate deficiency. And so once you start eliminating the folic acid and get started on active folate, then blood levels technically get lower because they're starting to clear out the unmetabolized folic acid that hangs around in there cluttering up the works. Or at least that's what we hope we're doing. Even as folate levels look like they're dropping, that person is generally symptomatically improving. So their folate utilization is getting better even as their blood folate is creeping down. I see that happen a lot, but if that doesn't sound like what's going on for you, reach out again and give me a bit more detail so I can answer more thoroughly or take another stab at it. Just remember that serum serum folate measures everything in the serum, anything that looks even remotely like folate, right? And usually that includes natural folate, 5-LMDHF, and whatever folate you're taking, plus all of the unmetabolized folic acid that's still kicking around in there. It isn't a great test in terms of value on its own, but what we can do is exactly what you are doing, which is compare numbers over time. Typically, we want this to drop a bit as the unmetabolized folic acid, or UMFA, is leaving your system. But if you were overtly low when you first came in and it's still dropping, then that's an entirely different problem. I love listener questions, and I'd love to answer yours. If you happen to have a question, let me know. There's a video ask for questions on uh, at tohealthwiththat.com on the first page, the home page. I'll try to do an answer podcast every month or two, just depending on how many questions come in. I also love meeting you guys in Genetic Rockstars. It's an MTHFR community away from the craziness of social media. 
with lots of inside information, polls, tips, and generally other MTHFR folks who are talking about their experiences. Please join us at community.tohealthwiththat.com. Thanks for listening.